2020 has been short of no surprises, you know, and we've had had lots of those to date. And I think we'll continue to see the election results, though, have come in. And, and that's something that we're seeing the market react to this morning prior to the news about the vaccine, which then really, uh, you know, it contributed to the, the major market moves to the upside. There's still some unknowns as we work through some of the details. But I think the big takeaway there was the the market was uh, reacting to the, the the view that the election was resolved. And so that uncertainty and being able to move on is certainly a positive with respect to market reactions and, and having that clarity. So that's, that has been well received by the market so far. I think the big story around our election here was the voter turnout, just seeing the number of people that voted in this, this election and how that's really eclipsed recent, uh, recent presidential election voter turnouts is a, is a good story, certainly in the U.S. What during this pandemic have you found yourself doing as the president of NYSE that you would not have done maybe in the past? I, I, I think what we've been doing is we've been focusing on how to strengthen our community and give them the tools that they need to fight this unprecedented environment. So one of the things I wouldn't have expected I would have been doing in the past was holding a series of conference calls with our CEOs with, with people like former FDA commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb who's providing information about how to battle a pandemic and how to keep employees safe. And, and that information has certainly been really what's been most useful for many CEOs this year as they're figuring out what are the right steps to keep their employees in, in a safe environment. And, and so many of them have been asking the same questions. How are, how are you handling the pandemic is a very common question to hear as, as you get on the phone with CEOs. So really thinking about those types of things, how they think about their workforces going forward, not just during the pandemic cycle, but just long-term. This year really showed us a lot about the acceleration of digital transformation, about the not just the digitization of processes that exist, but really how people are transforming their businesses with the importance that they had to put on remote work and all of, all of the different elements that go into their day-to-day. -day. So many of them are taking that information and considering how does this redefine where they're going? And with every crisis, there's opportunity. And that's certainly a message that I hear and we look at our own business. What do we learn from this and how do we want to continue to evolve? Because we do have opportunity to learn from everything that, that occurs, whether or not it was welcome. Well, let's talk about remote work for a second. You were also one of the first New York area companies to start to bring people back to work. And now we're sitting here today on a day where Joe Biden has already started to create a task force around this pandemic. What would you like to see out of a national response for COVID-19 as we get through what he called this dark winter? I think it's really important to recognize that we've learned a lot about the virus over the past few months, and we've learned how to safely operate. So yes, there, there, there is real value in limiting the number of people that we bring together, but we can reduce the risk of transmission of the virus by the things that we've learned, like wearing a mask. So we reopened the New York Stock Exchange trading floor in May. We have over 400 people coming in uh, each and every day. They're wearing masks. They're social distancing. We've put a lot of precautions in place to keep people, to reduce the risk in the environment. And we haven't had any cases of transmission that, that we've seen on the trading floor. And that's because we believe that we've, we've taken these precautions. And you know we've had cases that we've screened that were attempting to come into the building. And so by using those measures, we've been able to reduce that risk. That's how we keep the economy open, is by thoughtfully bringing people together in a way where we're reducing risk. And I think it's really important that we do recognize that some businesses are going to struggle if we can't reopen the economy. There are ways to do it safely. So let's use what we've learned about the virus, use what we've studied, but find a way to, to focus our energy on the businesses that are most impacted. If there are people who are operating remotely without any loss of productivity or, or impact to the, to the overall economy, let's let them stay remote for a while. You know, I think we just need to use some uh, common sense and risk reward evaluations as we think about which which parts of the economy we want to prioritize, whether it be getting children back to school or businesses that would that might have trouble with, you know, withstanding long term downturns. 